Awesome. So um, just to reiterate, my name is Serena Hodge. I'm the Assistant Director of Pre-Law Advising and Pre-Graduate Education Advising within University Career Services. Welcome to Grad School 101. Um, we'll get started with some introductions. So uh, Micah, if you just want to introduce yourself, um, talk about what program you're currently in, and then maybe how you got to graduate school, your um, pre-grad journey. Uh, sure. Um... My name is Micah. Um, I'm a fourth year now in the uh, doctoral program in sociology here at UNC. Um, I suppose my my journey to grad school is that uh, what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I um, I graduated from undergrad in 2014. Uh, took a couple of years off. Um, before starting my doctoral program, uh, worked full time um, and have been at, at UNC, uh, as I said, for the past three and a half years. Awesome, thank you for sharing, Micah. We'll move on to Michaela. Hi everyone, I'm Michaela. I'm a second year PhD student in the bioinformatics and computational biology program. Um, and I came to grad school straight from undergrad. So I graduated in 2020 and I've been here since. Thank you. Um, next we'll go to Hannah. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. Um, I'm a second year PhD student in the Pathobiology and Translational Science program. Um, I graduated college in 2018 and then worked as a lab technician for two years um, at a totally different university to help build my resume and build my world experience and stuff. And then I actually applied to grad school a second time. First time was straight out of uh, my senior year of college. And then I ended up applying again after that two year gap period. And that's when I decided it was the right time for me to go to grad school. Um, so now I'm um, about to be starting my third year here. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Liz? Hi everyone, my name's Liz. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a finishing up my first year uh, as a PhD student in health informatics through the Carolina Health Informatics Program uh, or CHIP here at UNC. Um, I originally graduated a few years ago um, with my bachelor's in bio biological sciences, um, worked for a few years in the pharmaceutical industry and then in healthcare consulting and then came to UNC for my PhD. Nice to meet y'all. Awesome, thank you so much so much for sharing, Liz. Um, so this is a webinar feature, so you'll be able to post in the chat. Um, we'll first start with a presentation on um, just some considerations for grad school and resources that you can utilize. Uh, we'll also talk about scholarships and funding. Um, and then we will go into um, our panel. So I have some pre-developed questions for the panelists, but if we have time, we'll also allow questions in the chat as well. Okay, um, so we're gonna go to a mentee. One second. Um, so if everyone could use their cell phones or their laptops to um, go to menti.com, let me go on the website real quick. So we just want to know uh, why you're considering going to grad school. So if you go to menti.com, you just enter in the code 7388-9470. Um, so these can be numerous amounts of reasons for um, just trying to get ahead in your career. Um, maybe you're passionate about grad school. Um, maybe you just want to continue on your studies. Maybe um, you're passionate about a certain field. That's why you want to go to graduate school. So we'll see how um, everyone's answer is. Um, so I'm seeing the for the career options it allows. Um, I want to have more experience before entering the workforce. I want to make the best out of my career in psychology. I feel like my major may not be what I want to end up doing or my mind may change. Um, I don't know what to do after undergrad. I would like my JD and would really like to study law. 
um, advance my knowledge and open more career options. Um, I wanna get my master's degree in speech language pathology so I can be a certified speech therapist. I think this one is like scrolling. I would like to get a JD. So there's a couple of students in here that want to go to law school. Um, that's awesome. And if you are still interested in law school, um, I do conduct pre-law advising as well. Um, we won't specifically talk about law school today. We'll be talking about other graduate programs, but just in case. Um, I wanna get into OT school. I saw that one. Um, more career options for my major, which is statistics and data science. We'll allow for a couple more entries. Um, it looks like 15 students have participated. I want more experience mentoring and hands-on learning. Awesome, alternatives to med school, but still working with mental health and sound therapies. So these are a good variety of reasons of wanting to go to law school. Um, thank you all for sharing and the mentee. Okay, so some considerations for graduate school that you um, should be considering as you are on your pre-grad journey. What topic am I truly passionate and excited about? So graduate study is more specialized. How will studying at the graduate um, level prepare me for my intended career path? Do I need a master's degree or a PhD for the career I wanna pursue? Do I wanna take any time away from higher education after I earn my bachelor's degree? If so, what would I do during this time? Um, what financial aid and funding opportunities are there for the program I'd like to pursue? And then do I want to attend an online or in-person graduate program? Um, and then what is the timeline for applying to graduate school? And what is the length of time that the program requires? And do I need any prerequisites for the program I want to apply to? Okay, we'll go on to um, Micah's slide. And this is searching for graduate programs. Um, I think uh, you have the control over the, yes, there we go. Um, one of the, uh, the daunting things about uh, starting this whole admissions process, I think is uh, simply finding programs. I mean, there are what thousands of universities um, in the US alone um, with so many different programs you could possibly do. Um, and I think searching for programs is kind of one of these uh, these difficult tasks because you have to sort through all this information. Um, and so we put together um, a couple of sort of suggested methods or at least places to start um, for looking for graduate programs to sort of kind of get the ball rolling. Um, one of these is Peterson's um, and I think Serena is going to um, show you what these look like as um, I talk you through them. Yeah, let me pull that up one second. Sorry, my mouse is having difficulties. There you go. Um, so yes, Peterson's, um, it's a great resource for um, kind of starting to do your search um, and sort of narrowing down um, your, your programs of interest uh, based on various different dimensions that you might be considering. Um, here, Serena is looking at sociology, the field that I'm in. Um, you can narrow down by type, say if you'd prefer a, a doctoral degree over a master's degree, 
Um, you can uh, specify like your school size, setting, uh, tuition, uh, what have you. Um, and as you go along, you know you can you can click on any of these various uh, schools that come up. Um, maybe Serena, you could click on one that looks interesting. Yeah, so here, um, this would be Baylor's program. Um, you can see what sorts of degrees are awarded in sociology. Um, the number of degrees that are awarded, I, I suppose this would be each year. Um, and then information about the, the degree requirements, whether you need a master's thesis um, as part of your program, uh, whether you take the GRE, um, what have you. And some important information as well about admissions, like uh, the, the application fee, uh, the deadlines, things you have to think about ahead of time, of course. So in addition, um, you might look at US News and World Report. Um, some people may prefer to take into account the uh, ranking um, or the prestige of a program um, that may matter more for some fields compared to others. Um, but the US News is, is a nice resource because it gives you this very simple, um, the simple ranking of the, the quote unquote best schools. Um, you know, take any ranking with a grain of salt, of course. Um, but even so, it's nice to, it can be nice to know. Um, not just what like the most prestigious programs might be, but even um, that might give you a sense of like the competitiveness. Uh, Grad Trek is, is quite a nice um, resource as well. Um, it provides you with, um, as you'll see in a second, a few different criteria that you can use to narrow down your search. So you can specify, for instance, whether you want doctoral or master's level. Um, maybe you're sick of uh, Zoom classes and you'd like to prefer, or you like to exclude all online degree options. Um, and you know you can you can pick your particular uh, subject of interest. Um, say anthropology, for instance, is a popular one. And what this website will do is it will uh, it will give you a list based on some of these these preferred criteria. Um, so you might be a very interested in Connecticut. I hear that's a nice, lovely place to live. Um, and so you might only want programs in Connecticut, um, and you'd be willing to pay a moderate amount for your tuition um, if you have a sense of what your undergraduate GPA will be. And if you've taken uh, the GRE or the GMAT or TOEFL or what have you, um, you can put that in as well to get a sense of what programs you would be qualified for, um, or at least you would, you would meet the minimum requirements. And so what you'd find is that you have a perfect match. Um, there's one option for you um, for a, a PhD in anthropology at Yale. Uh, here, it's a great university. Um, so you can use this, this resource and the others that we've um, highlighted for you um, to kind of get the ball rolling on uh, maybe developing a sort of cognitive map of the various options that are out there for you. Um, it's never a bad idea if there are faculty members um, that you know that are in the fields that you're interested in um, to talk to them. Uh, they can advise you about what sorts of programs to look into, uh, what kinds of things to prioritize depending on your overall career goals. Um, so we always suggest, um, or we'll tend to suggest that you, you talk to faculty if that's an option for you.
Um, there are, of course, some degrees. Um, I think typically these will be more of the career oriented fields um, where um, the accreditation matters a lot. Um, so in, in counseling, there's, there's KCREP um, for social work. Uh, there's the Council on Social Work Education. Um, typically, it behooves you to go to a, a program that is accredited by um, this, the sort of governing body, if that field has one. Um, and so these are good starting places for if you're going into one of these maybe more specialized fields. Awesome. Thank you so much, Micah. Um, we're going to move on to pros and cons of a gap year. So um, Hannah will be presenting on this. All right. Yeah. And just to remind you guys, anyone who came in late, I did take two gap years myself, so I'm partial to that option. Um, um, but we're going to go over some of the pros first. So major benefit to taking one or two or multiple gap years is the real world, real world hands on experience that you would get exposure to the day in the life of someone who's got the career that you may be striving for. Um, and then with that, I think it's an excellent opportunity to um, develop your own work life balance that you might not have had in your undergraduate career. Um, and kind of just figuring out who you are as an adult in society before entering another chapter of education. Uh, there's, of course, the benefit of the mental break from academics. Um, depending on what kind of option you take, you might be working in a, a job that is similar to um, the field you would like to go into, in which case you're still learning and you're still networking and you're still um, trying to absorb as much as possible, but there's not the stress of grades and studying and meeting deadlines. Um, and it kind of gives you a little more free flowing opportunity to figure out what you like. Um, which is another bullet point down here, discovering what you truly want to go to graduate school for. I think having the space to really think about that in the context of a, of a more of a real world work life balance setting and not a um, high pressure, high stakes undergraduate setting can um, give you some good clarity. It also gives you a little bit more time to just um, talk with people in that field and network and, um, and just, it gives you more time for, for guidance um, to figure out what direction you wanna go and why you're going to graduate school. Um, and then depending on the field you're in, I would like to go in. Um, there's some uh, situations where your employer would be able to compensate your tuition if you were to go back to school and earn your master's, um, that they could or pay for a certificate or something like that. Um, that's very field specific, but that, that is a, an added benefit um, if it's applicable. And another field specific situation is that you could ask your employer for a letter of recommendation, which is something that I did that greatly strengthened my application. I was able to ask, um, uh, I worked in a research lab, so I was able to ask for a letter from the um, principal investigator that runs the lab. Um, and he was able to speak on my role, not just as a student, um, but as a, as a professional lab technician. Um, and so it was nice for, the admissions committee to see me as a student researcher, but then also as a professional in the professional field. Um, adds another layer um, of your, your quality as an academic. And then, oh, another big pro is that you've got a lot more time to really think and meld on your application materials. Um, there was a big, I noticed a very big difference for myself when I applied fall of senior year versus when I applied as a technician when all, you know, work was my only thing, more nine to five hours. Um, it was a lot less stress. I was a lot, I was able to be significantly more thoughtful. I had those extra two years of experience that kind of guided my, um, my application and my thinking and my reasoning as well. Um, but it just felt, it felt like less of um, like, oh, another assignment, I've got to study for these exams and then, you know, senior year chaos. And it felt like I could really just give it my all and put everything I had into this next chapter of my life versus feeling a little bit um, maybe uh, spread thin. Okay, so then going over to some of the cons. Um, 
So it could be difficult to maintain relationships with academic recommenders. Um, you might have a professor that would have been a very, very good recommender, um, but because you weren't applying to grad school right away, you weren't asking for a letter, and you think, okay, it's been three years, that would be the person to ask, um, but I haven't talked to them in so long, do they even remember me or remember what I did? Um, so there's that, that kind of consequence of keeping the gap. Um, you could lose momentum, and it may be a difficult adjustment returning back to school. Um, again, the whole nine to five work-life balance um, somewhat can translate into your grad school career, but it's definitely, you're definitely diving back into the educational academic world and it's, um, it can be a bit of a whirlwind if you take time off. Uh, there's a possibility that you would have to brush up on your academic material, um, which I feel like even if I were to go straight from undergrad, I would still have to be brushing up on stuff. Um, and then, oh, so if you're if you're utilizing university resources in preparation for grad school, uh, depends on the university and program and stuff. But usually, you know, six months to a year after you graduate, you usually you lose the benefits of um, career advisors or um, these kinds of resources like you guys are getting right now. So I think that's that's a good summary of pros and cons, and we can talk. We'll. There's a couple of questions at the end too. We'll be able to talk about our own personal experiences with um, pros and cons. The gap here. Thank you so much for sharing, Hannah. Um, we're going to go on to the next slide about um, some ideas for a gap year, and this will be um, presented by Liz. Awesome. Thanks so much, Serena, and thanks, Hannah, for summarizing that. Let's say, Hannah, some you know really sold you all out, sold you all on the pro side of um, taking a gap year, but now you're like, I'm not sure what I should be going and doing with that gap year or years. Um, these are just a brief sampling, not necessarily comprehensive in terms of what um, a lot of people typically um, utilize their gap years for. So perhaps the most obvious one is obtaining a full-time job or career. Um, you can really utilize Indeed or LinkedIn or um, I believe also Handshake um, for um, some great, really great um, job search tools. Um, you also do have access to Handshake for six months post-graduation, so you'll be able to utilize a lot of these um, different resources um, and can, you know, flesh out some of that real-world experience, like Hannah had mentioned, um, potentially even find an opportunity that will maybe pay for your master's or graduate degree, or you know, at least serve as a really great um, resource for a letter of recommendation writer. You can also secure an internship during that time. So an internship maybe being a little bit more um, short term, um, and you might be able to find ones that are six months long, eight months long, or uh, 12 months or something like that, um, and uh, utilize that time that is a bit more direct into and helps you flesh out where you might want to be doing your graduate um, work or studies in. Um, there's also options for remote work and travel. Um, so the Going Global is a free resource for students that's available on the UNC Careers website um, that uh, provides you with various opportunities where you can find employment abroad. And maybe soon you can just post that in the chat. Um, that way people can uh, have quick access to that. Um, there's also a couple different ways people can volunteer during that time, and I think this can often can sometimes, uh, you know, look favorably on your resume or your CV. Um, some ones that typically people are familiar with, maybe Peace Corp or um, Teach for America, I know is a big one. I, I believe some of these also offer stipend, living stipends during that time um, while you're volunteering and gaining that real world experience and gaining that experience. You can also use that time to really enhance your professional development. So LinkedIn Learning has a couple different really great courses. There's things like Google Analytics that offers maybe like quick certificates that um, helps you flesh out some of those skills that you might need or want for your graduate studies. Um, and then there's also post -bac, um programs that some um, university or colleges offer. This is typically about a one to two year program. 
um, great for if you want to get in a little bit more in depth into whatever graduate studies you're looking to do, or maybe you're looking to go to a slightly adjacent field and you maybe need a couple of prerequisite classes, things like that. Um, and says that's what a good post back program will be great for. In addition, you can use that time to also, um, you know, prepare for your graduate school application, like Hannah had mentioned, you know, really flesh out that material um, and really have strong letters of recommendations um, or take that time to work on your personal statement and study for the for any exams that might be required. And I guess I'll pass it off to Michaela to talk about that grad school application I just mentioned. Okay, so on the screen, you can see a list of the components of a graduate school application, and it will depend on what type of program you're applying to. For example, if you're applying to a STEM field, it's going to be slightly different than if you're applying to something like an art, art program or like dance or something like that. Um, but yeah, so the basic components of pretty much every application, um, and I think uh, the most important parts would be either the personal statement or statement of purpose, depending on what you're applying to and what they ask for, there, there is a slight difference. Um, and then letters of recommendation. So your personal statement or your statement of purpose, that's where you can really uh, let, the, uh, let the admissions committee know why you would be a good fit for that program and why it is that you want to go to grad school and why you want to go to their grad school and why you think that program would be a good fit for you. Um, and then the letters of recommendation are uh, basically another chance for your letter recommenders to convey that information to the admissions committee as well. And then other components include a CV or resume, CV for more STEM fields, resume for other fields, um, and then your transcript, which not only will show them your GPA and like your grade breakdown per course, but also like if your program has some required courses that they want you to take, so when I was applying to like computational programs, they wanted to know that I had coding experience or if it was a biological like computational program, they wanted to know that I had taken like OCHEM and maybe like an intro bio class and stuff like that. Um, so that your transcript will also tell them that. And then any standardized test that you might have to take. Um, so I know that this is like highly dependent on the program and these days, um, a lot of programs, especially in the life sciences, are doing away with their standardized test requirement, um, but still that's something that you might have to take. And I know when I was applying, there was one program that I really wanted to apply to, and it still required the GRE. So even though it was the only program out of all the ones I was applying to, I still had to take it. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, if you're applying to something like maybe like a fine arts program or like dancing or singing or something, you might need something else like a portfolio or a writing sample. Um, and then additional essays might be required. So like if you're going into a STEM field, you might need to write about your research experience. Um, and then the application itself might also have other questions like kind of short answer questions. Um, and then it will also ask you like your demographic information and pretty much like all of the information you already submitted with like your CV or resume or sometimes in your personal statement, it'll just kind of ask you to put it back on there again. Oh, and don't forget, um, there will be application fees and they're usually pretty expensive, but it is possible to get a waiver in some scenarios. So that there might be need-based waivers or like I didn't uh, research over the summer at one of the universities that I applied to. So I was able to get a waiver through that. So definitely if that's something you're worried about, uh, look into maybe getting those fees waived. Awesome, thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, our next slide will be about paying for graduate school. Um, so there's various ways um, to pay for graduate school. The ones that you should first always look into are scholarships, graduate assistantships, teaching assistantships, research assistantships, fellowships, and stipends. Um, I have this posted on the pre-grad website, but there is a directory for um, searching for scholarships. It's called Career One Stop. I'll also put this in the chat too. So what this is, is a scholarship directory. Um, let me go into, let me go back to the actual link for it.
Hold on one second. I can't find the direct link for the scholarship page. Hold on. Okay, awesome. So with this scholarship um, resource, you're able to narrow down um, where you're looking for a graduate degree. Um, these are the different types of awards, scholarships, fellowships, grants, prizes, public grants, and loans. Um, you can also just state like where you'll be studying along with um, if you're affiliated with any of these groups. Um, so these are all scholarships that you could apply for for graduate study. There's also federal student loans, um, private student loans, tuition reimbursement. If you're employed full time, you can ask about this um, as you're interviewing with different companies. You have the option to work part time or have a paid internship opportunity while you're in graduate school. Um, just always make sure to ask the admissions department what financial aid options there are for students if it's not clearly stated on their website. Um, just to reiterate, it never hurts to ask. Um, that's one mistake I feel like I made when I was applying to grad school is I didn't inquire more about just scholarship opportunities or GA, TA, or RA um, positions. Um, also, speaking with current graduate students is helpful as you could discover additional opportunities to apply for. Um, just a tip is that you do you may have to apply for scholarships and fellowships before starting the program, and then. Um, as Micah mentioned to me before, um, don't forget to ask if there's summer funding as well. Awesome, so we're gonna go into questions for the graduate advisors. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we have some pre-developed questions. And then if we have time, we'll also um, be able to let you guys post questions in the chat. Um, so I'll start with Liz. Um, how has graduate school been different from undergraduate study? Yeah, that's a really great question to start off with. And um, I did my undergraduate <laughs> many moons ago. So um, in addition to COVID being a difference, um, I think it's also been a little bit of a different learning curve when it comes to uh, managing both your course load and if you are doing something like research or um, other types of work while you're doing your graduate studies. Um, there's a lot of time management that is definitely involved that you may have learned when you're an undergraduate, but it's definitely um, been impactful um, and, and per particularly noticeable when you are um, doing your graduate um, studies while also doing research at the same time. Um, I think that's prob probably my the, the main difference for, for me, um, aside from um, me taking some gap years and then obviously getting a little bit more in depth into my particular studies and what I exactly want to do, which I think has its pros and cons. Um, while I, you know, there's not things like various prerequisites that may include, you know, English or history or those types of classes. Um, and you can take very purposeful coursework that is directly, you know, what you want to be um, studying or doing research in. Um, you know, that also is taken to the next level and in, in that, you know, these are a little bit maybe require a little bit more time and effort when it comes to taking and, and learning that material. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Liz. Hannah, do you have anything to add about how um, graduate school has been different from undergrad? Yeah, definitely. I'd say one of the biggest things has been um, kind of shifting away from broader requirements that you see in undergrad like courses that don't necessarily have anything to do with your degree that are supplementary um in grad school you're very much here for the thing you came here for um the topic that you're interested in the courses will supplement that topic uh, more or less but you're not you're not derailing with different um, unnecessary courses which is something i dealt with in college um, so i like that all of my focus could be in the field that I'm interested in. But with that, it's very self-guided. If you're not, I've found that if you're not passionate about it, if you're not really into it, it can be difficult. It, it's up to you to keep the momentum versus I think in college, you're kind of forced, you've got more deadlines, you've got tons of classes to manage. 
Um, this is a little more, it depends on the program, but I find it to be a little more free flowing, a little more free structured. Um, and it's up to you to take control of how you want to manage your time, what you want to get out of the, uh, your coursework and the classes and the seminars. Um, I think that's the biggest difference is it's, you kind of, you're, you're your own boss in grad school for the, you know, more or less. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, Michaela, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I think the biggest difference for me is just that uh, so I went to a small liberal arts school, so there wasn't too much research opportunity, especially during the school year. Um, and so like definitely now that I'm in a STEM program here, it's there's so much more focus on research, obviously, because that's if you're in STEM, that's why you want to get a PhD or a master's degree because you want to do research. Um, and so there's definitely been a lot less focus on classes and and they actually kind of tell you to focus more on like your research and your rotations and eventually it just transitions and you don't have any more classes and it's just you're doing research. So that's definitely something that I kind of had to get used to because coming straight from undergrad, I was definitely still in the mindset of like, oh, I have to do this, all this work for my classes. And I had to kind of focus more on the research. Thank you for sharing, Michaela. Micah, do you have anything to add? Um, I guess it's more of a follow up on everything everyone said. Um, and that is about like the, the unstructuredness of grad school. I think, um, I think that manifests the most in like the different kinds of assignments that you do. Uh, I feel like in undergrad, it's, you get more specific instructions, right? It's like, oh, write a, an essay where you compare these two papers or what have you. There's like a specific prompt. Um, in graduate school, at least in my experience, um, assignments are, oh, write a paper about this class that you're taking. And it can be about anything related to the class. And so, um, you know, you are expected to be, um, you're expected to be curious and like um, be the one to motivate the assignment forward instead of just being told, um, here's what I want you to do. Awesome, thank you for sharing, Micah. Um, we'll go on to the second question. What factors helped you decide that the program you are in was the right fit for you? Um, and we'll start with Micah this time. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, for a doctoral program, it's all about research, right? Um, and so fit means um, how close were my research interests with the work that was being done um, at a given department. Um, and so for the UNC sociology department, um, the fit was mostly are there faculty here who are actively doing work that is in the area that I want to get into. That's kind of like the primary aspect of fit that, that I think mattered for me. Um, I think a secondary thing was also like, what's, what is like the interpersonal atmosphere of the, the department that I'd be going into? Um, are people like very competitive? Um, are, is, is there like a lot of departmental politics happening? Um, I think part of the reason that I um, really was drawn to UNC and, and have really enjoyed my time here is that it's this like very friendly environment, it's like everyone gets along and like, even though in some ways all the students are competing with each other over various resources and, um, eventually jobs in the field. Um, like everyone is so supportive with one another and like everyone celebrates everyone's accomplishments. Um, and so I think having that kind of like atmosphere um, was important for me for the fit because I don't do well in like competitive environments. Um, and that's like a kind of thing you can get a sense of by like talking to current graduate students at a given program. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Micah. Um, we'll ask the same question to Hannah as well. Uh, what factors help you decide that the program you are in was the right fit for you? 
for me, it came down to the interviews. Um, so for STEM, you interview with about six faculty members. Um, and after going through multiple interview rounds, um, the, the two years right after college, and then again, um, after my uh, two gap years, um, I, you can get a really good pulse for like how people, how the faculty view the students and um, kind of the culture of the different departments you're interested in. And when I interviewed at UNC, all six of my interviews were fantastic. And I, it just felt like it was a good match. Um, the vibes were right. Um, it felt very kind of homey right away. And the funny part about this is that it was the one interview cycle that I did that was completely virtual. Everything else was in person, which I said, think spoke a lot about the program. Um, everyone had great things to say and you really have to listen. You have to listen to what they're saying about the place that they work at, what they're saying about the students, um, the culture and the environment and stuff. And everyone that I interviewed with at UNC had great things to say and it really shined through. And then talking with the students, um, it was pretty much affirmed. Um, and it, yeah, so I think I think just talking to people and really listening um, and seeing how the, the personalities and the vibes match is really important. Awesome, thank you for sharing, Hannah. We'll ask the next question to Liz and Michaela. Um, we'll start with Liz. What skills do you recommend that undergrad students develop now in order to help them succeed in graduate school? Yeah, um, I think there are two main ones that I think was important. I think the first one, um, which is um, getting involved with the research may be only particular or more pertin pertinent, I should say, to um, people looking to go into doctorate programs um, because master's programs, you don't one, you don't necessarily need to be doing research while you're doing that. And, you know, two, um, getting a master's, oftentimes people will go into industry afterwards. Um, so I think if you are considering a doctorate program, just having, you know, whatever relevant experience to with that, that particular program. So for me, it was like having research maybe in a, either an adjacent field or that field itself um, was, would be helpful. Um, I think too, and people maybe don't realize this as much because people talk about this when it comes to job searching and things like that. But I think networking is equally as important when it comes to considering graduate school. Um, and that's kind of ties back to um, people's answers to the previous question where a lot of it is like, you know, making sure that you're talking to other graduate students in that program, seeing the culture, seeing the work environment. Um, and a lot of that comes will come also when you are networking with individuals um, you know, speaking to other graduate students in whatever department and whatever school you're considering. Um, and I think having those, you know, networking and communication school skills is really invaluable, not just for, um, you know, identifying where you might want to go um, for your graduate program, but also later on down the line when you're, you know, collaborating with other people, doing group projects, things like that. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Michaela, do you have anything to add about skills um, that you recommend undergrad students develop now in order to be prepared for grad school? Yeah, so practice reading the literature. Um, so like primary research articles, um, definitely you're going to need them in grad school. You're going to need to write about your research and you're also going to need them to help guide your research. Um, and so, like I said, I, I went to a small like liberal arts school. And so like, I feel like this wasn't really a skill that I developed or in that I practice. And it really is kind of all about practice. You just have to like read a bunch of them in order to like get good at it and to get better at it or quicker. Um, and so definitely like, I'd say this is still a skill that I'm lacking and, and still one that I'm working to develop now that I'm in, you know, a grad program. So uh, that aspect is definitely making my life difficult. So if you can do that now before you go to grad school, I think it would be, it would be a good thing. Thank you for sharing, Michaela. Um, we'll go on to the next question. Uh, we'll start with Hannah. What advice do you have for the application process? This is a kind of a tough question. I would say, I would say the, as early as you can, when you start even thinking about grad school or doing something after your undergraduate degree, um, 
I keep, okay, this is, I, I really, I, I did this and I really liked it. I kept a little journal and anytime there was something that I felt incredibly passionate about or a lecture that I attended or a professor I talked to, it really just got me excited. I jotted it down and it really helped to kind of go back and reference um, for when I was writing my personal statement, like little moments that kind of built up along the way that made me realize this is the path I'm on. Um, this is why I'm doing this. Um, it was kind of kind of just made the whole process easier and I would definitely recommend that. And in the same sense, um, keeping notes about interactions with people that you want to write your letters of recommendation, because then when you go and ask them for a letter, um, which is a super critical component of the application, um, you can give them a little like, you said this thing to me, you know, you told me that I had the best presentation in class and you complimented my work ethic this time and we collaborated on this thing together. And if you have those notes for yourself, it makes it easier to just give it to them and it makes the whole letter writing process easier. Um, it, it just helps the, the, helps kind of make the process a little more seamless. I think that's, that's my biggest, my biggest piece of advice. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Michaela, do you have any advice for the application process? Uh, yeah, my biggest piece of advice would just be to get organized. Um, so I had a spreadsheet with all of my programs and like the specifics, the differences between them. And then also like what was required and like the deadlines and the application fees and like links to all of the, like where you can find information about that program and stuff. So I made a separate one for each of my letter recommenders. And I think like it really helped them because they get tons of requests for letters. And so having just like all of mine in one place with like the links where they can go to submit it and the deadlines and stuff, um, I think that they found that really helpful. Awesome, thank you so much for the advice, Michaela. Um, we'll go on to the last question for Micah and Liz. Is there anything you wish you had known about graduate school before you decided to apply or start the program? Um, and we'll start with Micah. Uh, yeah, um, I've been thinking about this a fair amount recently. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people uh, say the advice, um, you know, when you're in a program, like you need to have grit. Um, and that means, you know, you work through problems um, when you encounter them, you don't give up and you like, you just, you work through it. Um, I think one of the things that I learned so far is that um, sometimes it's just okay to like drop something and move on. Um, and, you know, I think I learned this really from like my master's thesis topic, which I had to come up with um, on the route to my PhD. Um, I like had this one master's idea um, that like I had some doubts about, but I just kept convincing myself like, oh, I'll just like stick with it. Uh, the longer I stick with it, um, you know, the better chance I'll have of working through the problem. I'll eventually get it and I'll have like a thesis together. Um, but after like an entire year of trying and not getting it to work, I finally realized like I just need to like cut my losses and start over uh, because by kind of fixating on this one problem I couldn't solve, um, I kind of wasted like a whole bunch of time that could have gone into developing new ideas um, and, and kind of having new thoughts. Um, and like a month after I, I gave up on my first topic, I came up with the topic that would eventually be my master's thesis. Um, so I think, you know, failure is sometimes like part of the process of creation. And like sometimes, you know, it's okay to give something up because that means like starting, starting over and, and, and exploring like new ideas. Thank you so much for sharing, Micah. That was really helpful. Um, Liz, is there anything you wish you had known about grad school before you decided to apply or start your program? Yes, all of the things. Um, so I have two. Um, one of them is what I wish I had actually known. And then the other one I think is what I gathered. So I spoke to a lot of other graduate students before I decided to pursue my graduate studies. 
Um, and this is the one resounding thing that everyone has told me. So I also wanted to share that. Um, it's not something I wish I had known. It's something I definitely knew coming into it, but I think it's something that other people should know. Um, so, but the first one is um, that I wish I had known is definitely setting boundaries. I, and I think this kind of goes a little bit into what Micah had talked about is, um, you know, I think the fact that you all are here on this call wanting to con and considering graduate school already means that you are looking to take your studies to the next level. You are looking to get involved in a lot of, in, in you know, a little bit more in depth of your studies and you're probably maybe an overachiever like I am. Um, and you probably already have a lot on your plate as it is. Um, so I really wish I had um, taken to heart the, um, setting of boundaries, um, you do get thrown into a lot of different and pulled in a lot of different ways when you are in graduate school, whether that's through your studies, group projects, research, maybe you're doing volunteering work or civic engagement, I don't know. Um, but just making sure that you take that time for yourself and you set aside some time during that really, really busy schedule um, for yourself and for your mental health. Um, the other part um, that I definitely wanted to convey that other people have really told me, and I kind of took this to heart, is that while um, the program that you're going into and the research that you, you know, maybe that's a particular um, area that you're really passionate about is really, really important. I think equally, if not maybe more important, is your advisor slash mentor, um, because that can really almost make or break your um, experience if it's like, you know, a doctorate program where um, they're sitting on your um, committee slash panel for your dissertation or, you know, they're reviewing your thesis work or anything like that. Um, and I think this is kind of twofold in that that advisor mentor can really make or, or break or inner shape your experience throughout your graduate journey. Um, but uh, in addition to, you know, being the one that that in part has a hand in, you know, whether or not you get your degree, but also I think is important as a mentor and person that, um, you know, if you're looking to go into academia or a field with your master's or something like that, that person is going to help mentor you and shape you to wherever you want to be and to help you get to your goals. And if you have someone that's not really looking out for your goals or for your priorities, um, then, you know, <laughs> I think that can really impact your, um, you know, two years, three years, I don't know, six years for your doctorate or something like that um, during your time in your graduate program. So I think it's really important to find an individual that is really an advisor that's really looking after your well being and for your goals. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we do have about five minutes left. Um, there's just a couple of things I want to share at the end. If anyone has a question um, for the graduate advisors, you can post in the chat. Um, we'll try to take one or two questions in the last five minutes. If you don't have any questions, um, then we'll just go on to how to make graduate school prep appointments. And then um, lastly, our survey. But if you do have a question, um, you can just post in the chat and then we can ask the graduate advisors. I'll just give it another minute. Okay, awesome. So Chloe is asking, uh, where do we go for specific advice about our situations? So this semester, we do have graduate school preparation appointments with the graduate advisors. Um, we have 30 minute appointments or 60 minute appointments. It's not going to be major specific, but um, I do have each advisor's bio on the web page. So let me put um, the advisor's information in the chat. Um, <clears throat> One thing to note is uh, we help out in 30 minute graduate school prep appointments with uh, researching graduate programs, um, just helping to create a timeline for applying to grad school. Um, we can assist with talking about letters of recommendation and how to network, um, how to ask for those letters of recommendation. Um, and then in our 60 minute graduate school prep appointments, we can also help out with reviewing like your personal statement draft, uh, we do mock admission interviews. Um, there's one student asking, when is the best time to take the GRE? 
Do I have a graduate advisor who has taken the GRE and is able to answer that? I think I see a lot of individuals taking it around the July, August, and September time. Um, I think that gives you enough time before most deadlines, which is usually around December, January-ish time. Um, so they have them well in advance. And if you need to retake them for any sort of reason, you have enough time to also schedule a retake. Awesome, thank you. Yes, I usually see students taking it in the summertime so that in the fall they can uh, work on their application materials. Um, I did get a question in the Q&A um, around how many <clears throat> graduate schools should I apply to? So um, Hannah, would you be able to answer just like maybe how many you apply to or what's your suggestion or advice on that? Um, I was advised to apply to about 12 programs. The reality of trying to accomplish that while you're taking coursework or working a job is, it's extreme. Um, I think I ultimately ended up applying to five programs, um, but I made sure that within those five, there was a, you know, kind of a shoe-in school, a mid year school, and then a reach school um, so that I wasn't going to like shoot myself in the foot and apply to only schools that I had a low chance of getting into. Um, but that was a lot more manageable and it didn't feel so freaking overwhelming. Um, I would say, I would say shoot for four and five. Five is a good number. Um, and then you can kind of adjust from there based on your own schedule and, um, and whatnot. Awesome, thank you so much for answering, Hannah. Um, yes, that is correct. We typically recommend about five or six. Um, and like Hannah said, a couple of safety schools or maybe a couple of dream competitive schools and then a couple of schools that are um, within, you know, what you scored on the GRE, if that's a requirement and the GPA that the school's looking for. Um, and then Chloe just wants to know, will any of these prep appointments be able to advise on gap years? Yes. Um, Graduate advisors will be able to um, talk about what you can do during a gap year as well. Um, I'm going to post in the chat just each advisor's bio. So if you specifically want to meet with a certain advisor, you can look at their availability on Handshake. Um, let me also give you guys the um, Handshake link to make an appointment. Uh, most advisors are meeting with students um, virtually via Handshake. It's kind of like a Zoom room. Um, but we do have two advisors, um, actually Micah and Liz, that'll be meeting with students in person. So everyone is able to access Handshake with their onion and password. So I put the link in the chat to make an appointment. The only last thing I have to share with you guys um, is just about our survey. So we wanna hear some feedback from you. Um, also, we want to just know, is there anything else that we didn't cover that maybe we could help out with uh, later this semester? So I will put the um, link also for the survey in the chat as well. Uh, the survey just takes a couple minutes. So if you could do that after this uh, workshop, that would be great. Um, it's six o'clock now, so I just want to thank all of you guys for attending. Um, I want to thank the co-panelists for all their wonderful advice and um, going over some really helpful information. Uh, thank you guys for coming to this workshop, and we hope to see you again um, in a future graduate school preparation appointment. Bye, thank you. Um, also, the recording will be posted on our YouTube probably tomorrow. Um, it's the UCS YouTube, and it can be found on the careers.unc.edu webpage. Bye, you guys. Have a great night.